Um, all the questions that are coming in, I'm trying to keep up, and so we'll somehow get your questions answered, if not tonight. Um, we'll get you answers. Um, one of the questions, Patty, that is uh, kind of on a lot of people's mind is, what is your status now? And do you still have same-sex attraction? And how do you, like, identify yourself? Man, you're going to wish you weren't here. I identify myself right now with one word. Menopause. <laughs> <laughs> this room is brutal, man. Talk Thank about you. knowing you're a woman. <laughs> wow. So, um... I, I identify as, as, a, as a Christian. I do not identify as a gay Christian. Um, I believe that's really dangerous to identify as a gay Christian. People identify that way because they say they still have same-sex attraction. But um, I love what, do you guys, are you guys familiar with Rosaria Butterfield? Yeah. Listen to what she said when uh, she was being interviewed by Elisa Ch Childers, who's awesome as well. Where did my Wi-Fi go? Did that go out with the heat? Or I mean the air? No. <laughs> Sorry. Should have stayed. Is it, is it Elisa? Yeah. Um, remember that? Remember the little <laughs> no internet connection? So um, let me find it under my notes. Um, she said... This is what she said when asked about gay identity. The cross does not make an ally with the sin it crushes. Isn't that good? Posted it. <laughs> the cross does not make an ally with the sin it crush crushes. If I would have kept any part of my gay identity, it would have held, it would have, it would have had a, held a grip on me still, and I probably would have been back in the life. When I walked into that church that day and cried out to God and said, Father, forgive me of my sins. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I knew I was giving him everything. But listen, I didn't get saved so that I could have opposite sex attraction. I didn't get saved so someday I could have a husband. That thought just disgusted me when I got saved. I got saved because I realized God was real and that he loved me and I wanted every bit of God that I could possibly get. And Amen. And so when I first got saved, I happened to have the honeymoon phase. I know not everybody gets a honeymoon phase. They go right into trials. I had a honeymoon phase, so there wasn't a lot of thought about uh, uh, same-sex attractions. But then when I started asking God the questions about where did it come from and the, the memory of the, the sexual abuse came up and some of this stuff came up, it was so hard that my thoughts were, let's go back to your comfort zone. Uh, uh, Jägermeister, Miller Lite, line of Coke, all at the gay bar down the street, but I didn't. Instead, what I did is I got flat on my face and cried out to God and said, God, I want that because I know how that feels, but I want you more. Actually, I'm not sure if I do. My lips are saying I want you more and my heart is saying I want that more. Will you hear the prayer of my lips instead of my heart? And will you make my heart and lips eventually come together? And he did. It's about obedience, you guys. Jesus laid down his life for me, so I was willing to lay down every aspect of my life for him. And I didn't, I'm not missing out on anything. I've gained everything. I know how to have relationships with women now that are, are good. A lot of people think homosexuality is not knowing how to, to be with the opposite sex. It's not. It's not knowing how to be with the same sex in the right way. I was longing for things in women that I, I didn't get in other ways because of family circumstances that I didn't get into tonight. But, but now I was, I was growing in friendships with women at church and learning how to have real friendships without sex being involved. So am I attracted to men? No. 
but I'm attracted to my brothers. You guys are awesome. I used to be the, the person walking down the street holding my girlfriend's hand and if a, if a, on the sidewalk. If a, if a guy was walking toward us and even glanced at us, I would jut out my chest and spit at his feet. Oh, what are you looking at? Like with all this gnarly face and hopefully that's not the pictures you got when you guys were taking <laughs> pictures. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I hated men. And it took me a little bit after getting saved to to really be able to feel safe in, in a room with men. But you know what I did? The, the women that I was becoming friends with, I told them, I don't like men, and I know I need to. Will you invite me over to your house when your husband's home so I can learn what it's like to be around men that won't hurt me? And, and they did. These men are my brothers now. I trust them. And it took, some things took a long time. I travel, I mean, I travel for... I, 10 years now, something like that, I've been in, in ministry. I go to churches all over the country, all over the world with people I don't know. And I always go to the church early so I know where my exits are. <laughs> A little bit of flight attendant, but also <laughs> because I don't know who I'm with and I want to know where my exits are. That might not ever go away, but I'm so much further than I ever was before. So my identity is um, a, a Christian, I, and I know there's, I just, I'm a follower of, of the word of God and the, and the son of God, Jesus Christ, and that's it. You know, I, I love the fact that um, we're not trying to make somebody straight. Mm -mm. We're trying to win them to Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's like we're not trying to make somebody sober. <laughs> You know, we're trying to, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to get them to know their value in Christ more than anything. Mm -hmm. I, I will say, you know, I, I came from a great church and I was at this church for 18 years before I moved out here. But, you know, in the, in the first year when I was at church, there was only a couple of women would just come up to me and be like, oh, you're so pretty. Wouldn't you look great with earrings, you know, or wouldn't you look great with this and, you know you're amazing. God's got a husband for you someday. And inside, I was like, well, if that's the case, I don't want to stay walking with the Lord because my idea of a husband was abuse. And so we can't, don't put things on people. Please don't put things on people. Don't try to fix people. You can't. Who, I mean this nicely. Remember, I love you. Who do you think you are trying to fix somebody at church or your child? People don't need to be fixed. They need to be redeemed. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> this question says, I'm not a parent, but how do I approach this subject with kids in the family, uh, both younger kids as well as tweens and stuff? So how, um, not a parent, but around kids a lot. Awesome. Uh, thanks for, for asking that question. Uh, I would say ask questions, knowing, understanding though that, that you, as long as you... <laughs> you have permission or it's appropriate, you know, if they're nieces or nephews or, or whatever, as long as it's cool with their parents, you know, have just to have conversations like, hey, what's it like ex at school? And, um, you know, I know, I know when we were doing this the other day, you know, we saw, we saw a couple that was, was two women together. Like, how do you, what do you think about that? Like, is, does anybody talk about that at school? Is there anybody like that at school? What kind of curriculum are you learning at school? Um, I just want to know what you're, you're learning and what you think about all this stuff so I can talk to you about it and so that we can pray together about it. And if you have any questions, I'm here for you. But um, it's a little bit different to start that conversation when you're not their parent unless you have that permission from parents. But if you have that desire... And, and, and maybe pray about getting involved in youth work. Kids are awesome. I mean, when I have Q&As with, with the kids, I just, it's like, wow. I've never been asked that question before. That's great. But, um, yeah, that's. Our youth love you. Um, hey, can we hang out tomorrow? Yes. All right. <laughs> you know, um, speaking of that, we had. Some of you might know, but uh, mm. a young man in our youth group passed away recently. Um, we're doing his memorial service on Friday. And, um, sorry, <laughs> the day we told our youth group, Patty 
was here doing a training that afternoon, and she came early to help us minister. And so just super thankful for that. This question, Patty, um, is probably the one of the bigger questions. I mean, we're at 30-something questions right now. But you kind of mentioned it about, like, um, getting involved, you know, if your, your son or daughter has a relationship already. But um, invite, like, let's say the age old question, if we're invited to a wedding or if we're invited to a gathering um, with same-sex attraction or maybe it's a, a same-sex wedding or something like that, what's your thoughts on us either attending or su supporting or whatever that would the be? The biggest, the most, the most popular question I get asked is, should I go to a, a, a gay wedding? So going to a gay wedding and going to a gay barbecue are very different. Um, depending on whose barbecue it is, like when I would go to barbecues, if it was all lesbians, um, well, if you were a guy, we probably wouldn't have let you in. Um, but, um, you know, it was more just hanging out, tossing the football around, talk about stereotypes. Um, but it, 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 it was hanging out. But sometimes when you go to, when, when, it's, when it's gay guys and they have a barbecue, it, it's a little bit different. Um, some Speedos and stuff, if they have a pool in the backyard and, and, and some interesting things going on. So that might not feel, be comfortable for you. Now that's not everybody, but listen, I lived it. I was Adam. It's a lot. Going to a gay wedding, my answer is, I don't know. There's a lot more to that, though. Should I go to a gay wedding? I don't know. I say ask and pray and ask the Lord to show you, are you going to show him, bring God more glory by going or not going? And ask him. My opinion is no. My opinion is certainly no to the ceremony because you're coming into agreement with what these two people are doing coming together. And so I, ask, I would have to ask you, where do you set your boundaries? And I know it's hard when it's your kid, but if your kid was uh, going to marry someone that was a Wiccan or believed in, in Satanism, and that's what their wedding was going to be, would you go to that? Like, what are your boundaries? Um, now, when, again, this is my opinion, and I've been asked, and I always, and I pray, but every time I ask God when it comes to, should I go to this reception, because I won't go to the wedding or the ceremony, should I go to the reception, I always get the same answer from the Lord. If I go, I'll be deceiving them. I lived in deception for 36 years. I don't want to deceive anybody. And so um, it's, it's the conversations I've had to have, both ends, myself and the other people were weeping, crying. And it was, it was like, but look, I know your ministry. I know what you do. I know what you believe. You won't be deceiving me. And this is what I say. Two things are going to, this is going to affect our relationship either way, whether I go or whether I don't go. But if I go, I'm going to be disobedient to God. And it's going to affect our relationship in a bad way because of my sin. And I love you too much to let my sin, my disobedience, affect our relationship. I would rather be obedient to God and let him minister to you, because he will, whether you believe in him or not, let him minister to you in hopes that my being obedient to God and, and waiting till afterwards and getting together with you guys after you come back from your honeymoon I'm willing to trust that God will do something within our relationship that, that we'll still be able to be together relationally. And both times it has been that way. Amen. You know, um, last week um, I was cleaning out my office because they painted it. And um, I found a Bible college book that I had. And it, was a, uh, it said, The Complete Guide to Youth Culture. And that was from like the 1990s. So I threw it away because I'm like... <laughs> So for those who don't know, I've been the youth minister here at the high school for 22 years, and I've been in youth ministry even longer, so I've seen a lot of changes. And with my age and stuff, I mean, you know, let's be honest, right? Some of us guys maybe, like, if a guy looked at you, you'd make a fist, like, bro, don't look at me, <laughs> right? So then we become Christians, we're supposed to be loving, so I guess the question is, you, you mentioned about, like, with a parent to, to a teen, 
uh, or, or to their child about making sure you're stoic and making sure you're relatable and listening. But for all of us, I guess, as believers, our approach to loving, sharing, not showing hatred, discord, whatever, how, how, how would you direct us in that? I don't know if I'm fully understanding what you're so, saying. A lot Make of times, it a short question because my brain stops after a couple too many words. <laughs> Drugs at 12. <laughs> Not a lot there. A lot of times the church is more like the Bible says, so there. Okay. So all truth and not enough grace. So, so uh, Warren Wearsby says, uh, Lord, help me to get this right. Warren Wearsby says, uh, truth without, grace without truth is hypocrisy. Truth, wait, truth without, wait, it's, all right, you guys help me out. Grace without truth is hypocrisy, and truth without grace is brutality. Yeah, truth without grace is brutality, and grace without truth is hypocrisy. So we have to have a balance of both. Jesus in uh, John 1.14 is described as being full of grace and truth. And if Jesus, you, like this water, this bottle can't be filled with orange juice and filled with water. It's impossible. But Jesus was filled with both grace and truth. And if he's filled with grace and truth, then we can be because we have the spirit of the living God in us. And so I'm constantly praying. I, even as he was asking that question, I was praying. And I pray, Lord, will you give me every spiritual gift needed for this time? I said for this answer, but will you give me every spiritual gift needed for this conversation for, with this person in this moment? And I'm going to do that. If you guys stay and want to talk personally afterwards, I'm going to do that with each one of you that come up because I don't know. Some people are going to need a little more grace when we talk to them. Some people, it's going to be grace, 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 truth. Some people might have had 20 graces by the time they get to us, so it might be grace, truth, truth, truth. Jude says some save with fear and some save with compassion. We don't know, so we have to pray and ask the Lord, but it has to be a balance because we can't just throw truth bombs at people. They don't know what to do with the truth when it's not doused in grace. Did you? I didn't. This question says, I never thought about this uh, subject until recently because I raised my children in, as Christians. Until recently, my six-year-old was watching some Disney episodes that shows two guys as dads, and my daughter said to me, see, Mom, a guy can marry a guy. I said, no, silly. I, I, and so I explained God created girls and boys um, an opposite sex. Um, I read them the Bible, I pray devotions, and so on, but the sh they're showing more and more deceptive things. How should I guide them outside of what they read in the Bible, and I'm praying, and they're here at church and things. Mm -hmm. Take Disney out of your home. I, I, I mean, we, we ha if, if, your, if your child was struggling with drugs you would, and, and the, you, know, you had a bowl full of pills, you would take that out of your home. We, I mean, I, <laughs> I, I want, I don't know what it's called, whatever that thing, the EMP or whatever that thing is where all the whole Internet thing gets shut down. You know what? I, I retired with a pension from from the airlines. I can't touch it until I'm 65. But I, take every. I would rather that happen and ev lose every single penny that I own than to have kids have the access to the internet that they have now. It is killing our kids. There's a man named Brad Huddleston. He's a friend of mine. Wait, we had him here, didn't yeah. we? Um, he wrote a book called Digital Cocaine. Amazing. Amazing man, amazing ministry, amazing book. But go online, YouTube friend him, Brad Huddleston, and he will explain what this does to our brains. It's the same exact dopamine releases that happens with drugs. And one thing he just, I just watched one of his messages the other day. I'm like, whoa, this is good. He said, do not reward your kids with internet time. Because it's like saying, listen, if Johnny, if you're a good little boy or girl, you get to do a line of coke before we go out today. 
do not reward your kids with screen time. This one says, our daughter's 21 and living a gay lifestyle already. So how do we minister to her now that she's 21? As an, so she's already an adult and living a lesbian lifestyle. So how do we, do we share the Bible with her still? Do we just... Well, if she was raised in your home and you've been a Christian for more than a couple of years, you know, um, then she knows who God is. She knows the truth. And... Um, you fast and pray, you fast and, fast and, well, pray all the time, but I would sincerely say fast once a week on behalf of your daughter. 2 Samuel 14, 14b, so 2 Samuel 14, 14, the second half of that verse says, yet God does not take away a life, but he devises means so that his banished ones are not expelled from him. And then if we look at, at Luke 15, which is the story of, of the prodigal. If we look at verse 14 of that, it says, uh, then the, the son went off and did his thing. It says, and then there arose a severe famine in the land and he began to be in want. Who is sovereign? God. Who brought the famine? God. He devised a means so that his banished one wasn't completely expelled from him. And that kid came back to his father with open arms and daddy didn't ask any questions. He just received him. And so fast and pray and stay as involved in your daughter's life as you possibly can. Go out to lunch. Do the things that, that she enjoys if it's whatever she in, enjoys as a 21-year-old. Stay as involved as you can in her life and ask her how she's doing. You don't have to talk about her identity. Ask her how she's doing at school. Ask her how she's doing at her job. Ask her how she's doing with whatever she's in, you know, the things she's involved with. She's way, way, way more than her gay identity. Amen. Way more than that. So you've had the conversation. She knows the truth. You're fasting and praying. And we'll see God do a mighty, mighty thing. And pray scripture with her name in it. Um, I like to use... Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 19, and Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. And I'm actually going to pray it now. Somebody give me a name. Rihanna. Rihanna. <laughs> Lord, we pray for Rihanna and Crystal. Lord God, we ask that they would be filled with the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We pray that Rihanna and Crystal would walk worthy of you, Lord, and that they would fully please you. Lord, we pray that Rihanna and Crystal would be fruitful in every good work and that they would increase in the knowledge of you, Lord God. Strengthen these two beautiful women with all of your might according to your glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. That's what it sounds like. And do the same thing with Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 19. And however, wherever else in the Bible the Lord leads you to pray uh, with your child's name in there. And listen, the Lord will do it. The Lord will do that. Remember what I said in the beginning. The enemy can't take your life, so he's going to try to steal your hope. Don't lose your hope because your kids will see that. And if you lose hope in God, then why should they believe a God in that you're losing hope in? You grow in your walk. You enjoy your walk with Jesus. Don't let your children's deception and sin lead you away from the Lord. It's going to affect every part of your life. Yes, sin has tentacles that reach far and wide, but don't let their identity steal your joy. Let it take you deeper into your walk with God because he will do great and mighty things because he's a great and mighty God. How would you handle a situation if a child comes out and the parents disapproved and now the child does not want a relationship with those parents? Well, I would imagine the child is, is out of the home. And so um, I guess you have to, to honor that as, as much as you can. But if, if they still have, you know, your, your number, if they haven't blocked you on, on whatever, uh, just, you know, say to them, you know, I'm, I'm, I understand you don't want a relationship with us, 
um, but I want to let you know we want a relationship with you. And if you tell all your friends, I'm not going to know, but I'm going to let, I'm telling you now, if you tell all your friends that we've, we've um, kicked you to the curb, that, that we've, we're the ones that have suffered this relationship, you're lying to your friends. Don't tell your friends that we didn't want relationship with you. You need to tell your friends the truth that you didn't want relationship with us. Because if you're not honest with your friends, then who are you? What kind of friendships do you have? We'll always be here for you. Well, we want you back. We want relationships with you. And until you block our number, I'm going to be sending you text messages every now and then just to let you know that we love you. And if there's something that happens within our family that's devastating, please don't block me because I want you to know. If one of us gets sick or you have a sibling that gets sick, you're going to need to know, go live your life, do what you want. You have plenty of people that will accept you for who you are and where you are in the way that you feel like you need it or want it. We accept you as our child. We love you as our child. But we believe differently about your identity, but that doesn't change our love for you. It just means we believe differently. And if you cannot accept that, then we pray that you will eventually want to come back into our family because when you do, we'll be here with open arms. I'm going to ask her two more questions and then we'll end. She said she'll stick around, but between the heat and I know a lot of you have questions for her. So um, one, I, some of uh, people saw your decal and they were asking how come it has the rainbow flag? Um, well, first off, the rain, I wish it had the purple got cut off. Um, the LGBT rainbow flag is six colors, and God's rainbow is seven. Pride month is in the sixth month. Interesting. Um, uh, the number of man is six. The, you know, the number we uh, associate with, with Jesus is, is seven. But I'm not going to let people take away the beautiful colors of the rainbow. I mean, when we see a rainbow outside, does it make you think of your gay neighbor? Or does it make you think of God? <laughs> I mean, I stand, I stand and I look at rainbows, especially you guys don't get rainbows out here because you don't have any stinking rain. But, <laughs> but on the East Coast, we have them a lot. And it's just, is it, it's just like, oh, look at that. Look at that. But if you notice on my little sticker, it's also the male and female symbol. It's the, you know, seven colors if the purple would have came out. But um, I have a couple of them if you want to grab one or whatever, but I'm just about run out. But um, I love, I love the rainbow. All right. We're not going to get maybe another quick, just real quick. Got saved January 19th, 2003, got baptized in August of that same year in New Jersey on the shore, um, on the, in the Atlantic Ocean. Happened to be a little bit of a cloudy day and a rainy day, so, so we were kind of like under this gazebo thing, and, and it was sprinkling a little, and then we went walked down the beach um, toward the water, and as I was walking toward the water, so like, like so this, this carpet is the sand, and this is the ocean. Um, as I was walking in, I looked up and from, and like, so here I was walking in right here, end to end rainbow over the water as I was walking in to get baptized. And the Lord just spoke to my heart. I've given you, I've given you a, a new, a new, not a new rainbow, but that's what I heard. I've given you a new <laughs> rainbow because I was ready to have it like tatted all over me all my flight my crew bags and stuff had rainbow stickers all over them and stuff so the Lord reminded me who he was on the day I got baptized there's so many uh, and I apologize there's so many uh, deep heavy questions but um, th this is the last one thing before we close I'm gonna ask this question then when uh, after she answers it I'll close in prayer and then uh, we'll hang out um, go, go get your kids. If you yes, have kids, please. Yeah. Um, but we'll stay here. Tomorrow night, one of the questions was, what's the age for tomorrow night? So it's junior high and high school, and we're going to be moving into the banquet hall tomorrow night. So if you're youth, uh, any junior high, it's open to all junior high and high school uh, in the banquet hall tomorrow night. Uh, Josh and I will be there with Patty. 
and our leaders and all that. And so that's tomorrow night. Okay. And just a couple things that as I was praying for you guys today, what the Lord knows your hearts and I don't, these are just some of the things that I wrote down for today. Um, but, um, there's paperwork over on the counter over there that will give you uh, ministries that will be helpful for you. Uh, we have uh, one of our uh, ministry leaders here um, in, in with us. She leads Help for Families, which is one of the most common places that I send people for. But um, a ministry that's new to me, I don't know how long it's been around, but it's new to me like the past six or eight months, is AXIS, A-X-I-S. And it's amazing. Like there's a plethora of information there for parents with what your kids, your Gen Z kids are experiencing now. So make sure you pick up that. Um, for your kids, find out what is the biggest lie they're believing right now and minister to that. And this is huge. We need to prepare our kids for war because we're millennials or older than my generation is the one starting this. We've bubble wrapped our kids. We have bubble wrapped our kids. We've not prepared them for war. And, and so we need to do what it takes to make our children warriors. No wimps. We need warriors. We need them to put on their spiritual armor every day. They're getting blasted at school. If they speak up at school, they get bullied. They get mocked. They get threatened. Prepare your children for war. Unbubble wrap them and prepare them for war. Um, make sure you pour into your other kids. If you have a gay identifying child, please make sure you pour into your other kids. Um, oftentimes, I, I talk to siblings and they feel, uh, they feel neglected sometimes and very angry at their sibling because they're getting all the attention. And um, we, as the church, we need to repent for our own sexual sin. We know probably don't talk about it enough, but we know there's people in this room right now that watch porn. There is. There's probably a lot that are watching porn. We need to repent of our sin. The church lacks power because it lacks purity. And so um, confess your sins. Confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed, it says in James. And if you need to do that, do it tonight. Talk to your spouse about it tonight and then pray for your child that has experienced um, maybe some of the demonic things that have come into your home because of your sexual sin. Well, that's a fun thing to end on. <laughs> you better pray, brother. All right. Let's just pray and uh, we'll be here. Lord, we just thank you for uh, Patty and her uh, testimony. And Lord, we thank you for your love, your grace, and mercy. We thank you that you forgive us of all sin. Lord, the, we thank you for your word that says that you demonstrated your love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. And Lord, we thank you for hope that's an anchor for our soul. Lord, we pray for our, our little ones. We pray for our teens. We pray for the, the adults that are being lied to. Lord, um, even as Patty just mentioned, even... Uh, heterosexual adults that are living in sin. Lord, in the church, we pray for repentance. Lord, we pray for forgiveness and healing and moving forward. Father, for those who are struggling in same-sex attraction, those who are struggling with their identity, may they know that, Lord, they are fearfully and wonderfully made. And may all find hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's thank Patty for coming out.